Hey everybody, my name is Julie Zwillick and I am an author. I'm sitting here in my office in my home and I wanted to share with you today my book, Phoebe Sounds It Out. But before we do that, I wanted to know um, if any of you know what an author is. Do you know what an author is? Is an author a person who looks in your throat when you're sick? Is an author a person who builds roller coasters? Is an author a person who decorates fancy birthday cakes? Hmm? Is an author any of those people? Well, you know, an author is a person who writes books. And it doesn't matter what else you do. You can always write a book. So all of those people that I mentioned before, the doctor who looks in your throat, the mechanical engineer who builds roller coasters, the pastry chef who designs fancy birthday cakes, they all can also be authors. So no matter what you decide to do when you grow up, you also can write books and be an author if you like. And that is what I decided to do. So um, this is my book. And it's all about a young girl. She's about your age, maybe a little younger than you, and she's trying to learn how to spell her name. And as you can see, this is not an easy name to read. I don't know if you know how to pronounce this word right here, but I can tell you that I did not know how to pronounce this word until I had graduated from high school and I was in my first year of university in a Greek mythology course. And that's when the teacher wrote it on the board, the professor wrote it on the board, and then said it out loud. And I had no idea that that was how you pronounce this word until that moment. True story. So I wasn't always an author, but I was always really interested in reading. And so here's me. Um, at about your age, uh, I was six years old, and I loved to read when I was six years old, and that's about the age that Phoebe is in this book that I'm going to read you today. And here's me at 11, and this was about uh, right around the time I fell absolutely in love with reading, and I used to beg my mom to take me to the big public library down on the corner, and this is when I thought I might become a real writer someday, and I did. But until just recently, I wasn't actually writing books. I was actually writing kids' television. What? You guys are looking at me and you're thinking, what do you mean you wrote kids' television? You do know that when people are talking on TV, that there are writers who write the words that come out of their mouths, right? It's true. And, well... Until this time when I, when I wrote the Phoebe books, I, uh, my job was writing the words that come out of the mouths of the people that you see on TV. Um, do you want to see what a television script looks like? It looks like this. On the one hand column you see video and that describes what's happening on the screen. And the other column is the audio and that's the sound that comes out of the screen including the words that come out of the actor's mouths. Now I'm going to play you a video. Listen carefully to the words that the actors are saying because almost all of the words in this video were written by me, a writer, even the lyrics to the song at the very beginning. Do you know what a giant sequoia is? No? Oh. It's one of the tallest trees in the world. Okay, this is my harness. It's attached to me, obviously. This is a carabiner, a very important piece of equipment when you're doing any sort of rock climbing or mountain climbing. This, of course, is rope, a lot of rope. 
And this is gonna be attached to a relay at the top of the cliff and attached to me in case I do sort of screw up and lose my grip, prevent me from falling. Of course, I've also got my helmet. Very important to protect the noggin when you're doing any sort of rock climbing. And I have my camera so I can immortalize my encounter with the giant sequoia. All right, little guy, smile. When you grow up, you can show this baby picture to all your buds. Get it? Tree? Buds? Never mind. Just smile. Take your string and you have to wrap it to Does it matter which foot I tie? Um, no, but it's easier. No, but it's easier on your right. Okay. Your That's left. your left. And you go one, two. Now bring your hand through and around. Around, like this. And grab this. Grab your string like that. And now pull it. That's right. Underneath. Underneath. I caught myself a foot! <laughs> Ready? This rope. <laughs> Where's the spin? In the goat's legs. Oh, It's good, eh? All right, Yolanda, you ready for your portrait? Mm-hmm. All right, now. One, two, three. Smile. Ooh. Yolanda, we have a little problem. What? My life's not quite right? I should have worn my other good dress? You're out of film? Now it's time to decide what it is you'd like to paint. Perhaps a, a portrait of a lovable rock star. You know, someone who's around to uh, play the guitar for you and maybe do a bit of modeling. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, you know, someone really famous who everybody knows. Oh, okay. So, as you can see, I not only got to write the words that came out of the actors' mouths in those segments, I also got to perform them. All right, let's get to it. Let's read the book, Phoebe Sounds It Out. Phoebe Sounds It Out, written by Julie Zwillick, illustrated by Denise Holmes. Phoebe pulled on her rain boots. Mama called them galoshes, and Grammy called them wellies. But Phoebe called them rain boots, because that was what they were for splashing about in the rain. Phoebe liked her boots a lot. But it wasn't raining today, so Phoebe decided to call them sun boots, and now she was ready for school. Phoebe's favorite teacher was Miss Martha. She was kind and smart. When Miss Martha saw Phoebe in her sun boots, she said, well, we'll just have to put the sprinklers on after lunch and splash around. Miss Martha totally understood boots. But first, said Miss Martha, let's work on writing our names. The other teacher, Miss April, put a big basket of pencils on the table and got out her guitar. Miss April liked singing better than talking. Phoebe chose a pencil and then decided putting her right sun boot on her left foot and her left sun boot on her right foot was more important. Phoebe's toes felt wrong in her boots. Miss April sat down beside her. Phoebe, we're writing our names. Give it a try. Phoebe had seen her name before. Mama had even stitched it on her ladybug backpack. But it started with a P and had a whole lot of other letters that didn't make sense. Phoebe figured her mother had made a mistake. She didn't want Mama to feel bad about it because everyone makes mistakes, even Mama's. Phoebe put down her pencil and picked up another one. Then she held it under her nose and pretended it was a mustache. Miss April was floating around the table singing quietly, Just sound it out. Phoebe sounded out the first letter of her name. This was certainly not how her name began on her backpack. P was for popcorn and pencils. She knew the letter that made the right sound, one line and two sticks. The next sound was E. Phoebe drew one and threw in an extra so the first E wouldn't feel lonely. Maybe that's what Mama was thinking when she stitched that crazy O. And now Phoebe was at a letter she loved, the only one that made sense on the ladybug backpack, and when she sounded it out, a bubble and a stick. The hard part was getting it to face the right way. 
At the end of her name was the E sound again. Phoebe wanted to try something different. Maybe she could borrow the letter that was at the end of Nikki's name. Sounded right. Nikki wouldn't mind. Miss Martha came over and looked at the children's work. Something's not right, she said. She turned and walked away. Phoebe's boots felt hot on her feet. Maybe they really were only for rainy days. Miss Martha returned and placed a box on the table. We forgot to decorate our names with glitter glue. Phoebe liked glitter glue a lot. She opened the orange tube and squished it all over her name. It sparkled and shone. When Phoebe ran out of glitter glue, she switched her right sun boot onto her right foot and her left sun boot onto her left foot. Ah, that felt better. Phoebe handed her name to Miss Martha, who smiled and said, What a great start. So I have a couple questions for you guys. Maybe you can discuss these things with the people who are taking care of you today. You know the part of the book where where Phoebe was in class and Miss Martha looked at the children's work and she said, something's not right. Well, how do you think Phoebe felt at that moment? And here's another question. At the very end of the book, when Miss Martha looked at Phoebe's work and she said, what a great start. What do you think Miss Martha meant by that? And how do you think Phoebe felt then? Well, as you can see, a lot of work goes into writing a picture book. Um, But there's something else that's really, really important. It's not about the words at all. It's about the illustrations. Do you want to see what the illustrator looks like? There she is. That's Denise Holmes. She's my friend, and she's a very, very talented illustrator. She lives in Chicago, Illinois. And I wanted to show you something really cool. This is one of Denise's rough draft sketches um, from a panel in Phoebe Sounds It Out. And this is what it looked like when it was just a rough draft, when she was just coming up with the idea of how she wanted to illustrate the words that I had written. This is what it looks like in the final. I'll show you again. This is what it looks like when it's a rough draft, when Denise was just coming up with it, and what it looks like in the final book. Let me show you another example. This is when she was conceiving the idea of the children in the classroom sitting at the table working with their pencils. And this is what it looked like in the end. Take another look. Some of it stayed the same and some of it changed. So as you can see, a lot of work goes into writing a children's book, writing and the illustrations. And something funny is I was a television writer before and then I became a children's book author. And now, funny enough, I might go back to writing children's television again because of being the author of Phoebe. Let me show you this little book trailer that my book publisher put together recently that made me think that I should develop Phoebe into a television series. You watch this and you tell me what you think. Phoebe sounds it out. It's name writing day in Phoebe's class. Her teacher says, just sound it out. Phoebe isn't so sure, but she gives it her best shot. a pretty good start. So that's it for today. I'm Julie Zwillick and that was my book, Phoebe Sounds It Out. If you'd like to get a copy of Phoebe Sounds It Out, uh, please contact your local independent bookseller. A lot of them do online orders and sometimes even deliveries. And of course, if you can't get it at your local independent bookseller, there is always Amazon.com. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.